audience today on this uh, wonderful January weather. Um, just a couple of things at the start. Uh, well, I'll just say this for the record. I would like to remind everybody present that this meeting will be recorded and the recording will be subsequently made available to the public for listening. Um, yeah, a couple of items, just housekeeping really. The papers that you've got, you'll maybe have noticed that there's um, <coughs> an unusual numbering system to the agenda and the items. Um, so keep it simple. Um, if you see any number that you see that's four or larger, if you just subtract one from it, it's acceptable to number four and not three. I know that as an appendix of item three. <laughs> okay. Heads up then, grab <laughs> um, But it should make sense if you just uh, knock a one off the subsequent one. Um, there's also an additional item which is exempt, which we'll take at the end of the meeting. And, um, and so with that, um, Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that we have two apologies this morning, one from Rob Davidson and one from William Kirkson. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Same sends apologies as well. Thanks very much. Do we have any? Sorry, Councillor Nicholl. Uh, Provost. It's regarding the change of the February meeting to the 19th. It clashes with the Nisdale Licensing Board. These are not in, obviously, in the diary, the Licensing Board one. So it's clashing with that. So I've had to put my apologies in for that because as convener of the Licensing Board, I have to do that. I, I think uh, what I should say on that is that as far as I understand it, the 19th has been given as a kind of provisional date, but I suspect that may be um, subject to availability. So I know there's a couple issues with who can attend on that day, but that'll we'll find a date that's suitable for the, the most number of people after that. No, I appreciate that. I, I don't know if um, um, Mr. Haswell, you'd like to come in on that? Uh, ch Chairman, th uh, there are a number of issues in relation to police reform which we require to deal with before the end of February. I was aware that there was a complaint to deal with the police subcommittee on because that's the central diary. The intention was to substitute a full committee meeting. I'm aware a number of members have contacted me and intimated that the date's not entirely suitable. Uh, Fiona and I spoke about that this morning. We are looking in the diary for an alternative date and we will phone members round. Can I just say, however, that we're looking for a date in a fairly full diary, so members would bear with us. Uh, the intention had been to have the meeting on the 5th, but unfortunately we don't have the full information that it will be required to bring to members. Uh, I don't want to start here running by bringing half information and ifs, buts and maybes to members. I want to bring definites to members, so we will look for a date uh, between now and the 28th of February. Thank you for that. Okay, um, so if we just go on to then item number three. Um, which uh, is the Southwest Territory Hub Formation Report by Director, Chief Executive Service. Um, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add to this report. Uh, Chairman, uh, Convener, if I can just say, this is very much a legal technical report. Uh, the Council have signed up to Hubco. You'll see the report that went to Council and they uh, agreed with the recommendations. Uh, when we reverted to the Hubco uh, to have the the deeds signed off and the agreement signed off, uh, they immediately referred to the police authority and the fire and rescue authority. Uh, the argument was postulated that the council was both. Uh, that appeared to be accepted. Then they came back and we're now in a situation where the people who are funding Hubco have said that they would like to see uh, the police and fire authority as actual signatories to it. Now, I couldn't sign automatically behalf of the authority, so I brought it to the committee to ask you if you would agree to that. As I say, it's a very technical issue. Uh, the SPA and uh, the new fire authority, the National Fire Authority, are in agreement with you signing up. Apparently, if you don't, the OGU notice or the EGU notice that went out refers specifically to Dumfries and Galloway Police and Dumfries and Galloway Fire and Rescue Authorities, and there may be a legal technical difficulty some way down the line uh, that's the reason the report's before you. Thank you. Is there any questions on that 
Men för det första. We've got the power. In doing what you propose today, does that meet the spirit of the decision that was taken by full council in August? And if we go down this road, and it may be useful to me in the future, would this create a precedent for not following the, full, the wishes of full council? If you see the report uh, misnumbered number four, it refers specifically to Dumfries and Galloway and Strathclyde Police and Fire and Rescue at item 3.1.4. So it's following the wishes of the council. The council clearly had that in their mind. What I've got is a, a, an awkward lawyer somewhere who's saying, I need to have this one with bells and whistles on it, and I'm going to give them the bells and whistles if this committee agree to it. I think it, my view is that the council have taken a conscious decision that this is what they wanted to do. It's just a legal technicality. Uh, as to creating a precedent, if I meet an awkward lawyer again, it might. <laughs> uh, I'll defer to that one, sir. Councillor Ogilvy? Well, I'm confused now because we're doing item three and Alec referred to item four. So are we doing three first? Uh, it's not, it's three and four separate. We've got two different sets of recommendations. Uh, item four has already been uh, the, the, mess, the the number item four. If members look at the top of the page on the the item four, which is appended to item three, it clearly says the Fries and Galloway Council, twenty third of August. That is the report that went to the council on the twenty third of August, and the council adopted the recommendation. In so doing, the assumption was made that the council were binding themselves as police and fire authority. What I'm saying is that because of some legal technicality further down the line. I'm bringing this so that I've got a minuted decision of the Police and Fire Committee. That's what the lawyer's looking for, a minuted decision, nothing more, nothing less. So you're following a precedent set by the Council. The assumption was the Council had bound the Police and Fire Authority as well. A lawyer somewhere is asking, could I have a minuted decision, please? And the minute refers to the Council, not the Police and Fire Authority. Do you want to come back there, Councillor Oliver? Yeah, I appreciate that. I see that now. Um, have we signed it twice? Or, sorry, we've signed it already. I'm going to sign it again. So do we, the first one that we signed, uh, Gavin Stevenson signed it. Is that null and void? And we signed this one now. Because we signed it back in August. I've got that thing in there. No, sir. We'll add uh, a codicil to the agreement, which will be signed by Gavin on behalf of the police authority and on behalf of the fire authority. It'll just be an added sheet of paper at the back with the minute. Um, so just for clarity, um, it ha we have signed it as partners and as shareholders on the 15th of November, that's right, but that signature doesn't include the Police and Fire Authority, is that correct? Councillor First. Thank you, Chair. To use Mr. Herschel's terminology, he said an awkward lawyer. Surely, if we had got the wording and everything correct in the first place as to Fries and Galloway Council, we'd have, left, we'd have left no room for an awkward lawyer to create this problem. Probably. You're, uh, sir, if they, had, if they had included the Fries and Galloway Police Authority and Fire Authority in the document, the writ that was sent, the writ that was sent was for signing by the Council. Because the Council is the Police and Fire Authority, the assumption was that that signature would cover everything. We're now down the line several months later and somebody somewhere in a merchant bank who's going to be actually doing the funding of Hubco has said, oh, this might be a difficulty for the future. Could we rectify it and do it my way? I've capitulated and said, yeah, I don't have time to go into a great long legal argument. I've sent them the... Police Scotland Act 1967 as amended by the 75 Act and the 90, uh, the, the 73 Act and the 95 Act and all the legal arguments. I don't have time to argue any longer. Councillor Ogilvy. Just one final question. Um, Dumfries, sorry, Dalbiti High School on campus. 
Is that really a locus for the Police and Fire Commission? No, the, 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 the document, sir, is a general document which covers a future building, future public works within what's called the, the, the South West Hub, which covers from Lanarkshire right through to the Scottish borders. The, the report before uh, members of the council had re reference made to the Dalbeke High School at the campus because that was a commitment to get the resourcing for, from that through Hubco and to take it forward through Hubco. What you're signing up to is the actual hub document and the agreement. Um, Councillor Groom, then Councillor Peacock. It's uh, under 4, 3.1.5. I heard last night at community council, community council that we are no longer going to have any police dogs in our area. As from April. Is this true? I think they're being pensioned off, was what I was told to be none. And I think, especially when you're thinking of the poor, I mean, <coughs> the use of dogs there would have been invaluable. Uh -huh. okay. um, Councillor Peacock, is this relating to item two? Thank you, Chair. Um, just first of all, to say that. Uh, I appreciate that this uh, decision to join the Hubco initially was agreed at full council. Uh, I was against actually joining up with the Hubco at that time, and uh, that was clarified at the full council. But I accept that it was agreed by full council, and we have to move on with that. Um, and so it is a bit strange but, and, uh, that it comes to this committee, but I understand Mr. Haswell's explanation on that and just being a technical matter. Uh, so because a, a full council agreed to, to join in into the, the Hubco, then we are we really have to sort of move forward with it and get the document signed. But just, uh, it's, I don't, it's relation with the, um, the, the actual document of the Hubco uh, on page nine on item 6.1, um, where it states that uh, Dumfries and Galloway Council may wish to forward a representative for election on the board of the Hubco. And I wonder if Mr. Haswell could uh, inform me whether we did and if we have an elected director on the board, um, could he be named? Mr. Haswell? Not yet, so that's something that we'll take forward. We're still at the, at the stages of signing documents and pulling the thing together. You have officers who attend uh, territorial board meetings uh, to protect the council's interest as signatories to the document, but that's something that I would come back to members with in detail. So just to, to get a sort of better context or picture of what's happening there. The Hubco uh, process is ongoing. It's just that this, this is just a, as you would have it, a smaller technical matter that needs to be ironed out. Thank you. Any further questions before we go to the recommendations? So the recommendations are to Agreed to the Police and Fire and Rescue becoming a participant in Hubco and also to delegate the Chief Executive to sign territory partnering agreements and the participants agreement. Are we content to do so? Thank you. So if we go on to item four, which uh, is marked item five in the papers. Um, this is the police performance report um, and that I'll hand you over to Pat to add to the report. If I could ask the Chief Superintendent Leslie to speak to the detail of the report. Please. Thank you. Um,
members will be aware that this is a standard report that uh, they receive every PFRC. This one covers the period um, 1st of April, 1st of December 2013. Um, it provides performance data across a broad spectrum of categories, which I'll touch on in a minute. Obviously, it's part of the transparency and uh, to ensure proper scrutiny by members of force performance. You will see that there are four broad categories, which I'll go into in detail shortly. Uh, service response performance data, which is the user satisfaction surveys, public reassurance and community safety, which is about crime levels, uh, and detection rates, criminal justice and tackling crime, performance data, and sound governance. Um, if I go into user uh, satisfaction, members will see there is a, in the appendix, this particular appendix, there's performance uh, data there. You will see that um, we've got a slight dip an initial contact with the with the police. This is something that we're very we're very mindful of, and it's part of policy group. It's high in the agenda, and we're continually looking for uh, improvement. What I can tell you is that for the last quarter of the surveys that we've had uh, till the end of December, it has been particularly pleasing. What we've noticed is that we did have a slight dip before in the Galloway division, and what we now have with the latest surveys is that. Um, the number of respondents who were undissatisfied has went from seven to one in comparison with the previous quarter, which is extremely pleasing. And it's also down in the increase as well, the number of dissatisfied uh, uh, respondents by one. Uh, overall, what we're seeing is that the force has put a lot of effort into this, and that effort is now delivering results. In terms of the uh, customer satisfaction, what we're also finding is there is, a, 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 there is an improvement in public confidence, reassurance in terms of going out at night and during the day, that's also seen an improvement. And one other, um, as I drill further down, one other point of contextual information I would provide members with that's really interesting is that normally over a 12-month period we will receive three to five um, respondents that are telling us that of good work by a named police officer. In the last quarter, to the 31st of December, for that quarter, we've received five um, intimations from members of the public about good work by named officers. So obviously, uh, that in itself is, um, is particularly pleasing. If I now touch on the, the number of 999 calls, non-emergency calls, if we look at that, you'll see that it's down, it's fallen considerably. When I look into that and try and tell you why that's happening, um, we think it's about the fact that um, the number of crashes is down. It's down to the fact that we've put a lot of effort into what I just talked to you about, about initial contact with the public, trying to make sure that we're giving the proper information and they feel that we're getting a good service. So the number of follow-up calls that we are getting to our control room is actually down. And we think that that's, that's obviously played a part in that. Obviously, the fact as well that crime's down, as you'll see later on as we touch on that, so there's less calls coming into uh, the FCC. I'll we'll then go to um, the performance data for crime itself um, and give you a, a, an update on that. For example, in terms of group, group one, which is obviously, uh, as it states here, crimes of violence, etc. cetera, um, it's, it's down five on the three-year average. What I would say is that during that period, obviously we have had one, one murder which was at Stranraer on, on Christmas Day, and that's now going through um, the criminal justice system. Um, there's a person on remand. One thing we have also noted is that, obviously, this category is down, but we're, we're seeing a slight blip, an increase in the number of people that are using weapons, and that's something that we're looking into now, that we're doing a bit of work on to see what kind of proactive work, see what's getting done elsewhere in Scotland as well, try and combat that type of thinking, that culture out there. Um, group two... You would see it's up 19 uh, on the three-year average, but again, this is very much down to fluctuations um, in terms of historical crimes getting reported to us. For example, um, an individual, Mark Levan, appeared at the High Court last month and um, is, was, was went through that process. He's now up for sentencing uh, in uh, February. And he was reported for a significant number of these crimes, 16. So you can imagine one individual there is having a significant impact uh, on the figures. In terms of Group 3, um, you will see that it's down 
on the, on the three-year average, 275, um, which is good. Uh, one thing I would say again, just to give you an understanding, we, we, we have seen an uptake recently in terms of, you probably see it in the media, uh, tool thefts, sheds getting broken into, etc. And obviously we've been trying to target Harvin by getting information out there into the media. Um, hopefully that will come to fruition and we will uh, have a positive result there. Group four, again, overall, it's down 560 crimes in the three-year average, and the detection rate continues to improve. Group five is quite interesting. If I focus in on the drug, drug offences there in group five, um, you would see the overall uh, down on the three-year average. Well, we um, obviously, command team are focusing in on this, and we're starting off an operation. In fact, it's, I think it's next week it starts. And that I'll be looking at that. I don't want to say too much anymore, but there is going to be an operation kicking off there to address that, and um, that will have a, a positive impact for local communities in terms of uh, drug supply, hopefully, and uh, drug uh, possession offences. We've got Group 7, which is obviously road traffic offences, just to kind of give you an understanding of what's happening, happening there. Um, reduction in killed or seriously injured uh, road traffic crashes Slightly injured is down. Um, however, in the last week, we have seen uh, an increase there due to weather conditions. You'd be aware of the snow in the roads last week. It was particularly treacherous in Dumfries, um, particularly even at headquarters at the roundabout there, coming out of there. I found myself getting, getting caught out. So that, that's obviously had an impact. And unfortunately, we have the, the tragic events that unfolded uh, three weeks ago today at uh, Moffat when we had the death of a, a young lady and also last night, I don't know if members are aware that there was a, there was a fatal road traffic accident last night at, um, at Loch Maben on the, the bend there, the section of road as you go out of Loch Maben and you're heading for, for Lockerbie. So we're looking at that to try and, just now they're doing that uh, crash investigation to try and determine what, what, was at, uh, what was at play there. If I then go to um, the detection rates, I'm sure members will be... Um, Pleasing to see that the detection rate um, across the board there um, is very encouraging. Um, and we're working very hard at that. As I say, as I've touched on already, um, we have got a couple of operations that, uh, that are kicking off uh, to try and address uh, concerns that we've got there, um, any trends that are starting to develop so that we can, uh, we can uh, tackle individuals that are responsible, that are responsible for that. And hopefully um, it'll, be a, it'll be a positive picture because you put the resources in and you make a positive impact and you make it safe for, for local people. If I turn over the page and we go to a look at um, criminal justice tackling crime, the one I would highlight there is it's good to see that improvement in the, the percentage of reports being submitted within 28 calendar days. The reason for that is that means that um, it's a positive outcome for local people be, who have been the victim of crimes. It's about speedy justice. It's about getting it through the system. Um, obviously, it's then down to the criminal justice system to make sure that they are, they are, they are pushing it through the court uh, as quickly as they possibly can. Um, you would see the number of reports to the procurator fiscal is down. Again, we would attribute that to um, the, the motorway. Um, what we're seeing is that in terms of the safety camera partnership, um, there is a, a reduction there. People are, um, due to the economy, they are adhering more to the speed limit. We've also had significant roadworks on the 74 recently. That's obviously slowing people down, so that's had an impact, an impact in that figure. If we then look at the, the figure for um, sound governance and efficiency, uh, sickness, you'd see it, it's static for uh, police staff, which again is very, very pleasing. Um, if I then go to, in terms of police officers, you'll see it's up half a percent. What we do is, once a month, we have a meeting uh, at uh, headquarters, which I chair myself, and we look at that, that, that figure, and we go through um, the complete list of officers that, um, that are off, and just to ensure that uh, we've got a, full, a good fix on that so there's no drift. So that's something that we're looking at to ensure that um, it's properly monitored. Overall, um, what I would say to members is that um, the detection rate and uh, the, the reported crime tells us that, as the Chief Constable has stated on many occasions in the past, that this is an extremely safe place uh, to live and work. 
um, and it's in keeping with the council priorities, obviously. So um, our drive just now is to ensure that to the 31st of March, we maintain that performance and thereafter, it will be the responsibility, and Mr. Shearer will be touching that, the command team that's in there thereafter, to continue that, that good work and the legacy that's been left by Dumfries and Galloway Constabulary to ensure that people continue to live in a, a very safe uh, environment. You will see, finally, that we touch on, on here, care and detained and arrested children. That's part of a requirement for us to report by the, the inspectorate. It's done where there's a supervision order in place and for various reasons we have to bring young people in. There's a, there's a HMICS require us to report that to you. Obviously they're brought in and they, they receive constant supervision from ourselves and really certificates are signed. But these, these instances are uh, few and uh, far between, thankfully. So overall, um, as you can see, it's a very, it continues we have got a couple of blips that we're looking at just now in terms of uh, Group 3 crime for dishonesty, the sheds, etc. Tools. We're looking at Group 5 in terms of the drugs. Um, and Sheila's highlighted in the report, we, we, we are benchmarked through the, the ACPOS um, Scots Quarterly Report, which again demonstrates the force is um, a high achieving um, organisation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, I feel that's a, a good re report, uh, given the challenges and changes that the organisation is facing. But uh, please, if members have any questions, now's the time. Councillor Peacock. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, going on to the, the service response um, appendix there, um, I, I would agree that it, it's very encouraging that um, then the public uh, are certainly more satisfied with, with the force um, over the past uh, six months or so. Um, and, and that's... You know, you have to be congratulated on that, and uh, I certainly hope that when it transfers into the, the new single police force, that those figures uh, are still up uh, in the high percentages there, and, and I hope we don't lose that when it transfers to a single police force. Uh, but just a, a couple of a points. First, on the, the service response, um, could you could you explain to me as you, as you go down the list the, the percentage of non-emergency telephone calls abandoned or lost? Could you actually explain that to me a bit? Uh, and on the public reassurance on the the items referring um, specifically to the, the drugs side of things, on the drug supply, we were we are down quite considerably. I mean, is I find it difficult to find that you know the drug situation is decreasing within the whole of Scotland, not just this reason, uh, this region, but the the figures are, are down considerably. Um, could you maybe just elaborate a bit on that for me, please? Yeah, I mean, in relation to the, the, the drugs issue, um, obviously the force has had um, a number of significant cases that it's dealt with recently, so resources have been deployed to deal with those particular issues, and thankfully they've had a successful outcome. Because of that, you maybe the, the amount of resource that's been committed to the drugs issue, because it's been working elsewhere, has an impact on that. What I can give uh, myself is a reassurance, sir, that through an operation that's now that's being started across the region, that those we, we are committing a resource to that. We we have got um, various uh, packages prepared. It would be inappropriate for me to say any more, and I'll, I think I'll allow the, the chief to, to. Can we be very clear on that one? It's about quality, not quantity. It's about going for the right people, and we've had some very very good successes in terms of our organised crime groups. The lists that were here. We've had probably more success here than in, in terms of tackling those and, and taking them down. Um, so by taking them out, you then have an impact on your other figures. But I will always go for quality, not necessarily quantity. It is important to have a, a broad operational aspect about the possession element, and that's why we're developing other aspects. But uh, consistently, as long as I'm, I'm content we're going for the right people, then uh, that, that's the one that confirms it for me. Can I come back? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not criticising the force at all. I mean, it's, you have to be complimented on that, the fact that the, the figures are down and, and down quite considerably. I was, I was just sort of wanting uh, maybe an explanation as, as to how you came about that. But, uh. in, in terms of your, your second question, sir, that, that, that's an interesting question. That's about the number of calls that we lose that have been received to the, by the force uh, control room, um, where, for example, there might be a high volume of incidents. For example, at the weekend, 
on Friday when we had a huge volume of calls coming in to uh, the FCC about the road traffic accidents, the number of about, you know, people wanting to tell us there was a huge problem on the, the straight at Halais there at Lockerbie and elsewhere in the region. There was, there was lorry stuck at Carruthers. And so what happens now is people have mobile phones so that they're constantly on the phone to you to tell you to give you an update, which is good. But what happens there is because even though you've got adequate, or you think you've got adequate staffing levels in the FCC, there's going to be a percentage that after a very short period of time, we'll, we'll switch the phone off, and that's what you'd categorise as a potentially a lost call, call. Or it could even be a police officer phoning in. We've had that, we've seen that in the past, where they're phoning in and then they can't get through, and then they switch the, switch the phone off. Councillor Blake, then Councillor uh, Green. Thank you. It's going back to the care of detained and arrested children. For the benefit of somebody that remembers, could you possibly explain? the reason why 17-year-olds appear in certain circumstances in relation to supervision, and also, more particularly, on the first one, uh, where the person was arrested at 0046. It was 0706 before the unruly certificate was actually signed. Maybe explain why that switch was there. What, what generally happens is that there's a supervision order in place, and when these, in, in these particular instances, we endeavour where we can 100% uh, not to bring young people into custody, but circumstances in terms of their behaviour dictate that there is not there is no other alternative for us but to but to bring them into uh, a police custody. In this instance, I would imagine what's happened is that the organisation's been doing its utmost to try and find alternative, uh, for, for example, for the social work, for them to find a placement or find adequate arrangements for, for that particular individual, but that's been... They've been unable to do that, and as a consequence of that, there's been no alternative at the end of the day but to sign an unruly certificate. Can I just pick up on that? Just to be, to be clear, we obviously take a, an awful lot more youngsters below 16 into custody uh, to progress with inquiry. But this is more about saying, look, um, these particular youngsters had to be held in, in more permanent custody because there was no secure accommodation for them upstairs. We will be turning over on a regular basis, but this is more about those that are arrested and actually held in sort of some permanent custody. So we will, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, be interviewing youngsters who are coming to us. But when it starts to become a bit permanent in terms of arrangements, and we believe there's no secure accommodation for them elsewhere, this is when we get to run certificates. Councillor Green. Thank you. It's just on the uh, the uh, crimes of indecency, I see it was up 96. Is this, do you think that people are feeling more able to come forward now with these rather than just brush it off and try and hide away from it? I, I think that's a very good question. Yes, I think that's, I think that, um, dare I use the name, that the, the Jimmy Savile scenario had an impact. We, we could see that right across the whole of the UK, that there was an impact there through that, that investigation. It's still currently ongoing. It is subject to yeah, fluctuations. Um, we, we do, in this category, see a significant proportion, as is highlighted here, is our historical crimes that are being reported. Because once once you have one incident reported, it then tends to, dare I say, it mushroom. And uh, there's a number of other complaints that were coming, just like you can see with Jimmy Savile, it kicked off with one or two, and then suddenly now you have the situation down south that they're investigating. It was pleasing to see that the detection rate has went up on it as well. Councillor Ogilvy. I've got four questions, one at a time, or do you want all four at once? Um, if you go, uh, I'll, I'll start this start anyway. Um, group four, fire raising. Um, and they're relatively small statistics across the region. However, it's been brought to my attention this morning by BBC Radio <laughs> that there was four, I knew there was three fires, uh, car fires in Ireland, but there was a fourth one this morning. But I'm just worried about that trend, and I don't know if it's, it's replicated across the region. I mean, I'm not trying to be parochial. I'm just wondering if there was a trend or it's just specifically one area. Fortunately, it's not a trend that uh, replicated across the region. It's specific to Annan, um, and literally within the last seven days, we've had these four incidents. One uh, was personally in custody for, um, but quite clearly we're focusing on the, the others. Um, and have 
the ring the ring is ongoing so there's no progress with that the second one uh, follows up from what councillor peacock was saying about the drugs and, and there's a big debate going about should we legalize it should we not and, and you know i read the papers like everybody else and, and you think are we sending the wrong message out there because you legalize drugs folks don't get high and you need to fund that the other thing that worries me is legal highs so-called legal highs and the, the impact that's going to have on on i mean something depressed two people died uh, not in this area but elsewhere and i just wondered at the education side of it we don't I don't get to see much what goes on. You know, I know you're proactive, but you get into the schools. I know there's um, uh, certain initiatives that go on. That you, you, you talk to younger people about the dangers, um, and I know. But legal highs is is, uh, is, a, is a trend that I think is worrying. Yeah, it's worrying for us as well, and, and it's, it's one. You know, as soon as you start re using the words legal, people think youngsters think it's okay and it's safe. It's very clear in terms of messaging and education. I mean, it's very, very clear that, 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 that there's grave concerns that the issue of, of uh, some of these uh, drugs that can be bought uh, at the counter through the internet, uh, and it's just about trying to keep ahead, well, trying to keep pace with them, um, and I think that, that's the biggest uh, challenge for us in terms of this. Thanks, Chair. Um, the other one was the overall performance and benchmarking, and, and this is, this is uh, I'm, I'm, we've all said over many years how, how a good performance that the police and gallery does. We want to maintain that. And uh, going forward, um, you've got the luxury of, you know, um, scrutinising yourselves and other officers of both services. And I'd like to see something like that going forward because the benchmarking is, is, is a legacy we're going to leave for the new police force. That's where we were when we go into the big, big scheme. And that's, we've got to retain that. So we've got to have some sort of guide if we're still getting a good performance once we go into the national uh, arena. And, and I think, it's maybe not today, but it's my view, that we should have some form of this committee going forward. How that looks like, and I know we're talking about that at, at the Pathfinder meetings, but I believe, how can we scrutinise, how can we get the data uh, locally uh, if we don't have a, a, fo a focus or a forum for it? So I, I just make that point that it's excellent, and, and come April the 1st, that's our line in the sand, and uh, we'd like to improve on that, but we don't want to go down the way. You know, even if we maintain the status quo, that'd be excellent. So that's a point rather than a question, Chair. My final question um, was the uh, the number of people or the, the percentages going to the procurator fiscal. Sorry, giving reassurance to the um, public. Um, we all know there's uh, certain people in our own communities who are uh, repeat offenders. And uh, everybody uh, breathes a sigh of relief when they disappear for a wee while. Then, then you see them out again and they're causing havoc and they get community service and folks here are. And there seems to be a lot more community service given out. Now, I don't know what a determined community service is because I, I, I haven't, there's no uh, facts or figures on it. I'm, I'm not that I'm aware of. I'm not, this is not the police. I'm not criticising the police. I'm saying you do your job. You get them to the, that, to the, the courts. And the courts, in my view, are uh, maybe a bit lenient at times. Uh, so the point is, is, from your point of view, community service, does it act as a deterrent? Does it do what it's meant to do? Um, I suppose it's mixed. It's like, like anything, it, it, it will work for some, um, but quite clearly it doesn't work for others. And, and it's almost a, a testing phase for some. Um, I share and understand the public's concerns at times, uh, and the public's concerns are very understandable. Uh, and we particularly focused on, on the type of offenders that who we know are problematic for the community. It's not an exact science, unfortunately. Councillor Yen. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to show my appreciation and congratulations for the excellent work of Mr. Shearer and his team. Thank you. Um, just on, uh, on some, one thing that you did raise, uh, Councillor Ogilvie, and that is that the Pathfinder is, of course, looking at these <coughs> possible options for us to consider. So hopefully we'll be able to bring that back in the 12th of February meeting uh, for members to consider. And then obviously we can have our input on the different models and scenarios suggested for effective scrutiny after this is the vote. So just to, um, now, if we go to the recommendation, we've been asked to scrutinise, obviously, which I feel um, that we've successfully done, but um, could that be noted, scrutinised? Yes, 
Um, I'm going to Norton scrutinise um, a few of the members of, of the Express um, Association. Congratulations, you might want to express that mm -hmm. in, your, in your presentation. Yeah. Are we happy to add our, our observation? Sure. Thank okay. you. Um, okay, so if we move on then to item number uh, six minus one, which is five, of course, uh, and if we can ask Pat. Uh, thank you. Um, the report is a, a standard report that we bring to you in terms of our police revenue expenditure and highlight whether it's in line with the, the budget what, what, which was set or, or highlight any variations to it. It's a budget up to 31st of uh, December. Um, and broadly speaking, what I can say is that the, the outcome currently is, looks very good. We're currently demonstrating an underspend of 194,000, um, and some of that has been due to additional income, et cetera, received. I'll go into it a, a wee bit more detail. Um, key factors con contributing towards the projected underspend are listed at 3.1.5. Um, recovery mutual aid costs in relation to London uh, 2012 Olympics, uh, that was very positive. Uh, funding secured for um, officers deployed at the hospital, which we've committed to in previous years uh, to almost prove and work with the NHS. They recognize the value of that, and they are now funding the officers who are there. Um, and also, uh, some really prudent work by all our budget holders in force who are looking, working really, really hard to, to make the savings to understand the current environment we're working in. Um, and uh, medical examination fees with a bit of an underspend there. The overall picture continues to be positive, um, and I would think that that, that 194 uh, figure will be enhanced. Um, there's uh, Lockerbie funding coming, um, well, in fact, came into our account today that we would have hoped was going to come, but we didn't actually reflect in the budgets. So that is positive. Um, the uh, way we've also managed um, some of the underspend aspects is we. we out with the 194, we've been able to uh, make some um, purchases ahead to spend to save effectively. Uh, body armor, we've been able to deal with that, um, uh, allocating an additional 35,000 to that from the reserves to, to ensure that we get the body armor out there, um, better body armor than we've got currently. We also have. Um, purchased uh, or in the process of purchasing uh, new high visibility jackets so that we comply with the, the appearance of the, the new force um, and essentially it, it means that everyone will, will look the same, they won't look out the ordinary. Uh, there will still be some of our existing type long jackets that Mike and I have used by traffic officers etc. Um, we've also done a bit of work on the force production store uh, been able to um, uh, improve training devices for firearms officers and some of our spend to save initiatives which will bring benefit you know in terms of the spend of public money in the future so overall the the revenue uh, picture is is very very good and uh, whilst likes of the uh, murder that we had would have hit the overtime contingency budget it's all within our uh, planned spend so an overall uh, very positive picture. Thank you. Any questions from members on the report? Councillor Ogilvy. It's a good report, and, uh, and uh, as usual, it's very uh, matter of fact. The only question I really want to ask, Chair, is, is um, if we're going to end the financial year with almost 200,000 surplus or, or underspend, where does that go after the end of the financial year? <laughs> Ian wants it. <laughs> uh, basically, um, it will be the usual split, 49-51%. Uh, some of it will go back to government, some of it will uh, come to the council. Um, uh, so that that's on top of the reserves already uh, coming back. Um, and I think the council's commitment is to continue to see that with uh, uh, an overall sort of community safety hat on, um, which I think would, would 
very beneficial going forward. So there's still really an incentive for us to continue saving uh, the way we are. Um, and, um, you know, we'll be positive about some of the yeah, budget decisions. Uh, Councillor Peacock. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, yeah, it's, it's a very good report, and, uh, and all the staff that have been involved in to be congratulated with, with keeping the budget on track or, or, or on underspend, as you say. Uh, and again, it's pleasing that you've been able to use some of, some of that saved money to, to buy um, various equipment needed for the force uh, rather than bringing it in from the old budget. So, so again, on, on that, uh, it's congratulated. Just uh, one small point on the, the appendix there that we have. Um, when it has come down to the uh, the employee costs of police staff. You've you've had a environment there of thirty four thousand, but ended up with a, an underspend of one hundred ninety four. Um, is that the the environment that was used then? Obviously, at that time, you thought there might have been a shortfall, and so having to move some funds across. But uh, um, but you've managed on after I presume the environment was was made. You you managed to find the savings there to keep the to have your underspend on cost. Yes, absolutely. It was thought just early on in the year that perhaps we needed just a slight adjustment to that, that budget. Um, what we've been able to do is, through gapping, uh, come in with that underspend there. It's enabled us to, for example, you look above that line there, um, it's showing that um, we are increasing, well, in fact, we'll slightly overspend in terms of our police officers' costs. That's a deliberate one, and pushing our numbers to keep them high. Um, and right up to um, well, the 31st of March, two or three days before that, we'll look again other officers um, so that we are very much up to the, I won't say the limit, we're above the limit so that, that uh, it gives some flexibility for the new commander. Any further questions? Uh, well, Councillor Furster first, then Councillor O'Leary. My understanding there's 100k coming back to the council, yeah. roughly. In simple terms, yeah. 194, half of that, 100,000. How much did we agree? I can't just remember. It was a couple of meetings ago. It was coming back as well. Was it 150? So all in all, there's about 250,000 coming back to the council. Mr. Hoss was looking at me. The chief constable said that would be not. You didn't use the term ring fence, but it your understanding was that that would be used for community safety projects. And so it's just the budget's being set next week, Mr. Hart, and it'd be quite nice to find some extra money to perhaps do something. Was it 150,000 previously we agreed at the committee? And I'm looking around, we're all there. Uh, I'm, I can't remember the figure for the love of me. But there's 100,000 anyway, plus what's previously been agreed. And this would be available for budget setting next week, provided it was related to community safety projects, basically. As far as I understand it, the paper we had before, where it had, I think there's a combination of reserves and underspends, both from police and fire. The final figure, which has yet to be uh, determined, but uh, what's the correct term? I think it's been hypothecated, so that whatever the final figure is, the consideration for members will be how that can be spent within the maintenance of the uh, community safety initiatives, etc., in order to maintain the level of service delivery for safety in the community. But I think that's what we don't yet know what measures that will be, so it's hard to say what that money would be spent on specifically. Um, and again, we don't have a final figure, so it's fortunate to be handed to Paul Garrett here to ask for the finance uh, officer of finance. Whether it could be used for budget purposes at on the 7th of February, which is when the numbers should be determined, which is probably the budget. Certainly, the advice that I think Paul would give you is that let's wait to see how much it is and then allow uh, Pathfinder Committee or Rollback Committee or whatever to take the place of the Responsibility for Community Safety uh, to look at it. it. Ring fencing, you're correct, sir, is not a good term to use, but it seems logical that. This money was used for community safety in the past, so we should go forward for use for community safety. I think just to add to that, if I remember rightly, in that paper, yeah, one of the other considerations would that it would, because it's a sort of one-off, effectively, 
there would be almost a one-off cost associated with the transition as well that would have to come out of that reserve. Chairman. No, there, there is a separate uh, funding from the government of 350,000 to the council for that purpose to handle the transition element. Um, whilst the figure is not quite finally clear, um, quite clearly we know there's going to be underspend here and a bit more above. Um, I think from the reserves, the position is certainly above the 100k mark uh, to be coming back. So um, I wouldn't say just exactly what it is just now, but it's, it's, a, it's a good bit more. Thank you for that clarification. Um, are there any further questions? Uh, Councillor Ogilvie. It's just going forward, um, post services give us an end of year budget, the upturn, the upturn um, which is usually about May or June, depending on, on the committee cycle. It goes back to what I was saying earlier, where would that then report? Because that would be our benchmark again from a financial point of view. So we've got the performance stuff. This would be our financial performance. We need to have that final thing that we can have in our possession as members to say, well, that's what it ended up as. Uh, and, and from all intents and purposes, it'll be a good performance financially. So uh, I'll just maybe Alec or somebody or yourself here that could answer that. Because well, we haven't agreed where these things will end up. But whether it's full council or, or uh, as a subcommittee or the full council, I'm not sure yet. The, obviously, there will be an outturn report. We'll have to come to members and it will be after the, the reform takes place. Uh, I, Chairman, I, I would have thought that the logical place to put it would be to put an outturn report to full council. There will require to be a report uh, through the Pathfinder in relation to how we're going to take things forward. Can I just be clear, my understanding is that there will be resources made available year on year to this authority uh, to assist it in its scrutiny of what is before locally. Can I also be clear, I intend doing a final report myself in terms of annual report. Uh, it's my legal obligation to do so, and I'm particularly keen to do so as well to just actually put down that final mark about where we were. The other aspect that I've got responsibility for nationally is the Scottish Policing Performance Report. Uh, now, I will, after the 1st of April, still have the responsibility for collating that final report. Um, how that, that then works its way into you, but I would imagine that will, will come before some committee here, and that will be a very useful one because it will show the final position and, and the benchmark against other forces, uh, and I think would be an important one for you going forward. <clears throat> Thank you. So are we happy then to go to the recommendations, uh, 2.1 and 2.2? Um, are all members happy to uh, note? Uh, it says note, but we did the last thing we scrutinised, and you said note and scrutinise. I think we should do the same here because we've scrutinised it and asked it, uh, more questions. If it goes into the record as just noted, then you know at least we've scrutinised. I think we've got to be consistent with what we say, and, and it's a it's a matter of record that we did ask questions. No, I think that's a good point, and uh, I think we should get into the habit of doing that. Thank you. Okay, if we move on then to item, let's call it six, um, the Police Capital Programme Monitoring 2012-13 as at 1st of December 2012. Uh, thanks very much. Um, uh, it's a broad report um, which you generally get an update on. Can I say there is one mistake in here in the recommendation? It should say note capital expenditure of uh, 1.3 million to 31st of December. Uh, that should not say 30th of September. Again, broadly in line with the revenue report, it's, it's a good report showing that everything is on track. In fact, we've probably been uh, fairly creative um, in enabling other smaller projects to, to uh, be addressed. Um, the, the big ones in some respects I'll speak about initially, the major incident room, um, which we have completed at headquarters, it is complete, it's, uh, it's ideal, it's, it's serving its purpose. Lockerbie team are in there just now, and it it's, um, really enables them to function well and will be good for any other major inquiry down in this uh, side of Scotland. Um, the uh, other aspect about the upgrade of cells uh, provision, 
Uh, that was quite clearly um, in the report and we all approved. Both the cells at, uh, at Stranraer and the uh, more significant cells at Dumfries have undergone uh, some uh, significant improvement in terms of the general layout of the facility. Um, probably important, I think, I place on record my appreciation for the Council's support on that, but also for the, the contractors who are employed by the Council. They did an excellent job both at the uh, major incident room and also in particular at our cells uh, complex at Lawland Street there where um, they worked very, very closely with us um, and met some really tight, tight time skills around about the Christmas period when we needed to have the, the cells fully functional and operational and uh, I was very impressed by the work that they, they did there. Um, so th both those, um, the, the cell work and the upgrade uh, project, uh, the upgrade project for the cell and the major incident room is complete and um, running well. Uh, the other major project was the Castle Douglas uh, site. Um, it is 98% complete. Um, the only element that's outstanding at the moment is um, some BT work to get some cabling in uh, to make some uh, new and improved connections. Um, I've been out, I was out there last week. Um, it's a, an excellent facility now. Uh, it was much, much needed, uh, but it's, it's very greatly improved. Also, the point I'd make is, is that facility is still able to be used by the community in terms of a, a meeting room upstairs. It's much enhanced, etc. But uh, again, I appreciate the uh, committee's support in enabling us to get that work done. So I think it was really, really important that we get, got it done prior to moving into uh, single force. Um, I'll go through to the, the appendix itself. Um, I won't go through every aspect. Um, but hopefully quite happy to answer any questions on it. Um, window replacement programme at Stranraer, again, that, that improves the, the facilities there for the officers working there. Um, and uh, I would broadly say that everything is on track. Um, I don't think there's anything in terms of, the, of a capital uh, programme there that we will not be able to complete prior to uh, 1st of April. There may also be some uh, small uh, elements of uh, projects um, that we'll just have a bit of flexibility around it about the spend that Mike is looking at to make sure that we maximise and ensure that we get the best facilities and best value for money. Um, and I'll, I'll just keep you updated on these smaller elements uh, as we go forward. Thank you, Pat. Any questions? Councillor Rotherway. Just this. You mentioned it yourself, uh, Chief Constable. Uh, George Prentice is no longer on this committee, and I'm sure he'd welcome, because uh, it was a hardly annual for George and everybody, and uh, I was really pleased when we found a way forward for that, you know, the, with the partnership working. And I'm really, really pleased it's nearly completion, because it was on the agenda for nearly every month for years, but uh, no, I'm really pleased that that one particularly has uh, come to fruition. Can I just say on that, what we're hoping to do is have an open day at... Uh, Castle Douglas at the beginning of March to formally kind of reopen it to the public um, and so they can see the improved facility. Uh, any further questions? No, thank you. Councillor Nicholl. Pardon my ignorance, but what is Vascar Services? Devices, having respect, uh, devices. Can I, can I, I, had a, I had a feeling you might ask about that, given <laughs> it's related to uh, to use of the roads. But um, I'll pass on to uh, Pat. Can I say we've real problems with the vendors in this respect? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's an it is an important investment to keep us up with the right right equipment, uh, and so the officers can do their their, their job uh, as they should do. Um, it's ensuring that we've got the right devices and the particularly well approved ones. But can I say the money's been spent? <laughs> <laughs> just, just come back. D does it work in the dark? <laughs> Councillor Peacock. Thanks, Jay. Um, it's just to say, again, with, with all the projects that are listed here uh, and the figures that are there and the actual um, outturn of these figures, um, I think it's 
again, it needs to be congratulated by all involved, including the, the construction firms that have been worked on these projects, because all these final figures that are coming in here are either on or under budget. I know that there's possibly one, but I mean, in general, and there's an awful lot of, of, of work being involved in all the projects ongoing within this list. And to have them all coming in so tight to the budget, and that I think is exceptional. And, uh, and I just wish that some of the other departments in the council could work for figures like this. You're here, I think we should note that. Um, any, any further questions before we go to the recommendations? Okay, so recommendations are to note and suspect scrutinise um, capital expenditure to 31st of December, that should be, in relation to the police capital programme, and also to note the progress and reprofiling um, to date of the projected spend in each of the projects against budget. So are we happy to do so? Thank you. Um, the next item is an exempt. Before we go off the public, um, Carl Henschel's not here today. I thought it was going to be our last meeting this committee, Carol, was invaluable to me, along with Alec, for advice when, when I was chair, and I'm sure you've had the same luxury. And I just, on behalf of the committee, and I'm sure we all agree, is to record our thanks to Carol and wish her best for the future. Yep, absolutely. Um, I mean, we've spoken about this already, and I think, I don't know if it's appropriate, but if we can maybe draft a letter of just expressing these very thoughts, because I think, as Councillor Ogilvie has said, everybody here would has benefited from Carol's one-to-one um, -one assistance and other governance and guidance along the way, especially with the police pro reform process. Yeah. Well, she's not away yet. No, so. yeah. Well, um, um, uh, Councillor Blake, would you like to add anything to that? No, I would, I would certainly agree with that. During my five years with Carol, she certainly kept me, kept me out of trouble a lot <laughs> during that time. Uh, so I really wish her all, all the best for the future, and I would certainly support any anything that she office uh, and I just like to draw appreciation for the support uh, she's given the previous committee but more broadly to general advice.